assalamu alaikum friends so this is the first video uh, and before that we move on to some hands on sap applications we should first know some basic concepts in erps and uh, something some basic concepts about sap as well some basic things about sap as well so this presentation is about uh, these facts so uh, to start with uh, we uh, use uh, ERPs and SAPs, why there is a need of an ERP? Uh, because there are different departments in a company. Every department may have its own software. Accounts and finance department has their accounting software. Uh, sales department has their own sales and marketing applications. Purchase department, for example, warehouse department, they have their own material management, materials management and inventory applications, programs, softwares. So why we need uh, uh, an ERP? So an ERP is basically a, a centralized system which serves the purpose of the entire organization, every department, every function. So why there is a need of a centralized system? Why there is a need of a centralized application? The thing is, in order to understand the need of ERP, we should first understand the structure of a business organization. If you see the vertical bars in this particular image, for example, we have this purchasing, we have this production, we have this warehouse, and we have many others, including human resources, accounting, finance, everything. So these all are actually different departments, which are known as different functions. And traditionally, organizations are actually divided in the hierarchical model according to their functions. So we have, we see accounts department in an organization, we see HR department headed by a separate person, a purchase department having a specialized team, deals in purchasing headed by a different purchase manager, and so on. So this functional structure actually created the a functional applications. It means that accounts department, uh, since it contains all the expertise of uh, accounting and finance people, and is, it is headed by an accounts manager or a finance manager, so it has its own finance or accounting application. Similarly, purchase department has its own requirements, so they develop their own accounting application, uh, their uh, purchasing application, inventory management department, warehouse department has their own uh, application. So the functional departments actually historically resulted in isolated department oriented applications. But when it comes to business process, a business process, right, is actually it cut across functions. For example, purchasing not as a department, but purchasing as a process. If we see purchase as a process, we see that the need of a purchase actually arises not from purchasing department, but from somewhere else, from some other department, which actually needs goods, which needs some commodities in order to either make production. So sometimes production department initiates the purchasing process. Sometimes end user consumer initiates the purchasing process. For example, in my university, if I need a new laptop, uh, actually purchasing is initiated the process purchasing as a process is initiated by me I am the faculty member I am not a, uh, a, a, a person in purchasing department then it goes on to the administration department they approve it for example then it goes on to the purchase department they manage all the purchases then it goes on to the accounts and finance people who eventually pay to vendor it means purchasing as a process if we see it cuts many departments so you see this black line actually it's cutting across many departments because whenever we talk of a business process whether it is a sales or a purchase a process always cuts through many departments it means that if we want to cater a complete process if we want a computer application which caters the needs of a complete process it must come it must integrate all the other departments for example if i want only one complete software which takes care of my purchases I need to give the access to this uh, particular application to my end user, for example, the faculty members at IBA, to my purchasing department who are managing purchases, to my admin department who are approving it, to my accounts and finance department who are approving the, or actually eventually paying to the vendor. So this is the idea behind an ERP, that ERP is actually a process focus. And why the process is focused? What is the need to focus the process? Because every organization is a combination of the various processes. And why various processes exist? Because processes exist to meet the goal of an organization. And we all know from the historical books, traditional books in finance, that a purpose of a commercial organization is to maximize wealth or maximize profit, which is although not a very sound thing to, to, to start with, not a very good ethical thing to start with, but it is, it is, it is the way the things are. 
So the point is that since organizations has goals and goals are achieved by different processes and in order to complete these processes, we make different departments. So rather than having applications for every department, we should have an application which caters for all processes. And this gives us the idea of an ERP because ERP caters for processes. So if we see this particular um, uh, uh, slide now, processes actually cut across various functions, various departments. So this is uh, uh, why an ERP is needed. And this is the world has realized in last uh, 40 or so many years. And uh, uh, the concept of ERP has surfaced and now it has go, uh, it has uh, um, uh, many, many different developments over a period of time. So, I don't know why this uh, is bearing. Okay, so there is no need of it. Okay, I'm sorry, just give me a minute. The animation didn't have proper sequencing. So, this is uh, what we just discussed that there is always a purpose, a goal, and that goal eventually actually leads us to talk of uh, different uh, processes and the processes actually need uh, a centralized application. So uh, maybe a process, it always is triggered by something, triggered by an event. For example, if I want to purchase a laptop, it is the pro purchasing process for a laptop is triggered by my need, my application, my email to the admin department that I need a laptop. And then there is a step one, say but admin approves it. Then there is a step two, say purchase people purchase it. And there is a lot of uh, other steps within this step two. Then there is a step three, we eventually pay it. And then there's the outcome that I receive the laptop. And why I need a laptop? Because I need to cater to uh, organization purpose of distribute learning, uh, impart learning. So there is a goal that IBA has. And in order to meet that goals, we need a business processes. And in order to meet the business processes, we need to actually cross different functions. So there is an admin department to which this process actually cut through. There is a purchase department and there is maybe accounting and finance department. So functional areas means different departments. Every process, whenever you think it, it is uh, consists of various departments. So some of the key processes in an organization, right? Uh, in a manufacturing organization, uh, one key process is the procurement. The other key process is the production. And the third key process is the fulfillment. So these are the three core supply chain processes within an organization. Because we need to, in a manufacturing organization, we start with purchasing of raw materials and we have to pay for them. So there is a complete process for the procurement. Then we start production and then we complete finished goods. So there is a complete process for the production. And then we start fulfillment. It means we take customer orders and they deliver, deliver goods. So there is a complete process for the fulfillment or sales as well. And remember, one very important thing that the financial accounting process and the management accounting process, they are not directly doing any business. They are not serving the customers directly, but they are at the core of each and every business process because every business process has some financial implications. Even HR, HR hires laborers. It, it has to pay to the labor, promotions, increment, compensation management, personal development, training. Everything has some financial implication. And whenever there is some financial implication, there must be an involvement of accounting and finance process in finance department. So accounting and financial department, you see all the arrows eventually lead to accounting and finance department. I remember one of my boss, one of my uh, boss in my first job, he used to say that accounting or finance function, some, some companies have accounts departments separated from finance, some have the finance department as an umbrella department that take care of treasury and accounting and all the other applications. So he used to say that accounts department is the graveyard of information. And one other person used to say that accounting department is the maternity home of information. And both the statements are true because all the financial information eventually comes to the accounting and finance department, accounts department. Accounts department eventually holds all the documents of sales, all the documents of purchases, all the documents of production because each document has some financial implication which has to be recorded. There are some debits and credits associated with each and every business process. So accounts department is a central function and this way the role of accounting department or the persons and executives that are working in the accounts department is a very dynamic role. They need to understand the complete purchasing business process. 
they need to understand the complete production business process, complete sales business process, because if they don't understand the processes completely, although they can record the debits and credits, but they cannot implement the internal controls, they cannot mitigate the risk, they cannot identify the mistakes and frauds uh, in the business processes if they don't understand it. That's why, that's why account, an accounting and finance person, that is you people and me, we are the key persons who, in, the, in an organization who knows about most of the processes in an organization. If you take a person from the sales department, he only knows what is happening in sales, but he doesn't know what is happening in production and what is happening in procurement. If you take somebody from the HR, probably he knows employees details, he knows salaries, he knows the employee training programs, but he doesn't know what's happening in production and procurement. Similarly, if you take somebody from the warehouse, he doesn't know anything about what's happening in HR and sales. But if you take out some senior executive from financial accounting department or management accounting department, they are the people who actually know what is happening in sales, what are the steps involved in the complete sales cycle, what are the steps involved in the production, what are the financial implications and steps involved in procurement in HR each and every department. So this gives us some edge. You see that the director of finance uh, are most of the times uh, uh, not MBA, but they are the people who are experts in accounting and they play a very vital role in the boards as well, a uh, very important role, because they understand the complete business process. They understand the complete risk profile of a business uh, and, and their different divisions, functions, and departments. So financial accounting and management accounting are also processes, right? And again, when, say, when we say these are the processes, it, it means they cut across different departments. Financial accounting is not only done in finance or accounting department. If we see, if you see the concept of an ERP, we will see it. We will see that whenever purchase people do something, there is automatically accounting associated with it. Whenever sales people do something which has some debits and credit implications, the accounting entries are automatically made. So this is the concept of an ERP that it, it is an integrated system for the entire organization. We have different uh, applications for different uh, uh, business processes, and then everything is integrated. Everything is centralized. So, now what the enterprise system is, what is an ERP, enterprise resource planning. One of the definition comes from uh, that the systems that supports end-to-end -end business process. So we start defining the business process, right? So this is a computer system, a computer application which supports business process. End-to-end -end means every business process from start to end. It means there is one centralized uh, integrated uh, set of applications which have integrated data. One another important point within an ERP is that in, in ideally in an enterprise resource planning system, data, a single piece of data is only entered once. It's never repeated. An entry is never repeated. It means that if um, an employee is hired, for example, uh, his data, his NIC number, his uh, maybe passport number, his name, his address, his mobile number, it's entered once in the system. Then if he leaves, and if he comes back, we don't need to enter his data again. His core data remains in the system. So we just need to assign him a new employee ID, for example, and the data will automatically shift from the old employee ID to the new employee ID. The data will be shared. Similarly, if a vendor comes for a transaction, we need to enter the uh, sales tax number, uh, national tax number, and all the other details of the vendor, which is known as a master data, only once in the system. We don't need to repeat it. Otherwise, if there are different systems for finance, for accounting, for purchases, then vendor data is maintained by purchases department. They enter the data. Then again, when it comes to accounts, they again enter the data of the vendor. So there is a duplication if there are multiple systems. Another definition follows from Gartner. It's, he says that this is a technology strategy. So ERP is, although uh, we people are not technologists, but this, is, this has to do with something with the technology, in which operational business transactions are linked to financial transactions specifically general ledger transition. So this definition is more oriented towards finance or accounts. And this is more useful for us because we see that everything has some financial implication. Everything is associated with some accounting entries. So this is an, an ERP. SCP also delivers ERP solution. Oracle also delivers ERP solution. Microsoft delivers some Dynamics ERP or solutions. Sage delivers some ERP solutions. So ERP solution is actually linking all the other business processes within the organization to the, its accounting, core accounting function, function, its financial function. So this is another definition. Uh, and some of the features of an ERP, 
uh, I'm going to cover these features of an ERP in the next video so that uh, the size of the video is not uh, very, very uh, large uh, to keep you people motivated. Thank you.